Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Three Throw to Go, Akron's hottest and fastest growing show. We are live at Firestone High School at the Vex Robotics Competition, which is currently going on behind me. We've got another half hour until they get a lunch break. Uh, but right now, I'm here with Maggie. Hello. How are you, Maggie? Akron, Akron, Maggie. All right, so, so right now, uh, we're going to take a look around a little bit. But before we do that, uh, you, you're a Firestone alumni, correct? Yes, I am. All right, so yay. All right. Um, by the way, look what I'm wearing. I'm wearing my Vulcan, my Vulcan futsal swag that I got from Ottawa. If you haven't seen that interview, go back and check it. We got a professional soccer team that's getting ready to start playing in Akron. I'm wearing my Vulcan, my Vulcan swag. All right. So, so, so here we are, and and this is a this is this is a once a year event, right? Yeah, annual event. It's our okay. Fourth, it's our fourth. Final so this is the fourth time. Three blue forty-eight. We'll stop everyone. When, when, that's your dad talking too, that right? That's my dad. He's so, the announcer. So her, her dad's on, on the video through his voice. All right. So, so talk to me about your Firestone experience. So obviously you got involved with robotics probably earlier than that, right? Um, I was in. So I went to Litchfield Middle School, which is the middle school attached to Firestone, and I did the technology program, GTT is what it's called, and it's basically you start in your sixth grade, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. You go through and you do robotics. You learn about physics, principles of engineering, you take a bunch of different classes, you do just general engineering things, usually tailored to your grade level. So 6th, 7th, 8th grade, middle Match school grade. And then after that, my teacher recommended the second grade. Uh, my teacher recommended to me that I could start in Firestone, the Firestone program, which is the overall education project for the program. Okay. So after that, I started in 8th grade, in GT, I started in 6th grade, GTT, and then I joined, and then my sophomore year, I joined the robotics program. Okay. Here. Perfect. And your your teacher, I met your teacher. Mr. Spack, yep. Yep, I met him. He's here, so he kind of helps to oversee some of the event as well, right? It's it's run by the Firestone. It's not necessarily run by the club because the club is competing, but all the alumni run it, the teachers, the staff, Firestone helps out. But it's mostly run by our boost, the Firestone Robotics Booster Club. And this is this is a massive event, folks. Just so you get the scope, there are 46 teams, 46 teams. from 22 schools all throughout Ohio. And you, I mean, right outside, you see, uh, you see, there's 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 all kinds of buses that are out there. So this is a big deal. There's a lot of people here, and I, it, I've been here for about 10 minutes or so, and I'm I'm not gonna say, I'm, I won't say that it's intense, it can, it but can it intense. can be, all right. And we're gonna we're intense. gonna we're gonna walk around and show you some of the things that are going on. All right. So let's talk about the competition itself. Okay. You said there's categories, right? Yeah. So. It's kind of complicated, so bear with me. But when you have the entire competition, you can win and go on to the state competition for winning the entire competition. You're a tournament fi uh, champion. There are tournament finalists, which, depending on the size of the competition, can also go to the state competition. You have the Excellence Award, which is just all around the best team here. Your design notebook and your robot are just amazing, and you win overall. You go to states. There's the Design Award, which is based off of your robot's design, your team interview that you have, and your design notebook. So there's like a million different ways you can win, and there's all kinds of trophies, and it's it's a lot. All right, so I'm looking around, and, and you've got almost like the pits in, at like a NASCAR race, okay? Yep. So up above, all the schools have their own little locations. My question to you is, do they come with their robots already pre-built, or do they assemble oh, them here? Yeah. Okay. So you get, basically all Vex does is they give you a list of parts. They show you, you have C-channels, you have nuts and bolts, and they say, okay, fine. Here's your parts, build a robot. They give you the game, they say here's what you're supposed to do, here's your objective, there are a few restraints, you have to stay within the 18 by 18 inch size constraint, and then beyond that, it's up to you. Okay. So there are certain rules you have to follow in the manual, those are boring, but you have to follow those, and then you build your robot. Some teams start over the summer, because the competition starts in the fall when school starts, kind of go with school. You start in the summer, or whenever your team decides to start, and then you bring your fully built robot to the competition, and then up there in the pit areas is just where you need to make improvements, if you need to change, some people will just have a bad robot design, people decide to redesign the whole thing, just start from scratch in a competition. Not a great idea, but it has happened. Really? Yeah, so up there, you see teams panicking, some are just chill, everyone's, it depends on your team, but your robot is mostly built by the time you get here. And you bring it down here, you wait in line, wait for your match to queue up, and then you go and you compete in that zone. Alright, and then uh, we're looking around. There's three fields right now? We have two fields. So there's blue two competition fields and then one skills challenge, okay? And and we're gonna walk around now. You kind of give me a tour in a minute, but um, 
So you you went on after. So you finished at Firestone and then yep. you did other things. I did, yes. So tell us about that experience. So I went to the University of Guelph. It's in Guelph, Ontario. And I was a Batch psychologist. 44. We are still waiting on teams. 2668. And then I decided I actually want to change the clothes. So two, I'm coming nine, back to three, Ohio. Three, I'm going to go to the Ohio State Check in table for Batch 44. Cleveland State team for Engineering, two, six, not a surprise. Eight, one, so, B, and. And team 5293B. <laughs> well, wait a sec. Match 45. Oh, wait a sec. All right, so law, I'll talk because I'm loud. Teams, um, six, zero, you had zero, said eight, something to me about two, the world one, competition. Two, four, yeah. eight, so it's one, two, done. four, six, five, eight, and four, one, one, two, eight. That's match 45. Four, five, to the Owings Law check-in table. That's, that's, team, six, this, zero, this is her dad eight, talking. Eight, so, two, so one, two, it's, he's like a ring announcer for a robotics competition. I love it. All right. We're gonna, we'll one, take a wa I'll walk around in just a minute, but I want, I want to hear, okay, he's done? Yeah, he's done. All right, so go ahead, now tell us about the world, explain that. So basically you have your regional competitions, which is what we're at now, we are one of many that happen throughout the Just to remind you to the teams, the ones um, and then after that, you go to the state competitions, if you win one of these, they're excellent, sometimes signed, you're going to be until noon. You go to the state competitions, and the best in the best state competition, anywhere between four and 12 teams, usually it can vary skills, rankings, and how many people show up, you then go to the world competition if you win. And I have been, once I went my first year in robotics, my team went, and basically when you get to the world competition, it's every VEX robotics team from all around the world. So every, any country you can think of, everybody has a VEX program. So there's, it's everywhere. So you're in a room, you're in this big Louisville, Kentucky Exposition Center, it's where it's been for the past couple of years. We'll watch you're our there. big robot one time right now. Oh yeah. <laughs> Match 42, you know, final you know, score, you know, red, um, 20, there's blue, There's thousands four. of teams there, like, and I don't even know how many. There's just so many teams from all around the world. And you compete against the best of the best from all around the world to see who's the world champion. So it's it's pretty, it can be intense. Oh, I would I would imagine, oh, I would yeah. imagine. Um, so just to give me an idea, we're, again, we're going to walk around, but how much do these robots weigh? Um, they can vary. I mean, it depends what type of robot. I don't know off the top of my head exact amounts, but they can be have like small two pound little pusher bots we call them if it's just wheels don't really have other folks trying to push things and then they can range up to I think I don't even know I don't even want to say a number I've seen 30 pounds maybe wow but they can be heavy and they also have sharp edges sometimes so it's not, they're all battery powered yeah, right they're all the battery batteries some sure way yeah, so yeah. They're not fun to carry. Yeah, yeah. Well, I saw her carrying it. She stopped it. Yeah. Struck, you know. All right, um, we're gonna flip around now. All right. Take me for a walk, lady. Let's let's go look at the boards. So over on the left, you have the skills rankings, which are at the beginning, of the first half of the competition usually. You have your skills rankings, which is they put your robot in a arena all by itself in a field, and it's just to see the pure talent of your robot. What can you and your driver? What can your driver and your robot do? And that's it. So these scores are based off of the field over on the opposite side, not the competition field. And it's just showing how many points you can score in a minute 30, 45? I believe it's a minute and 45 seconds. Okay, and uh, you can see the points that are rolling by. Yeah. Okay. And then over here we have the qualification matches. This is showing what's going on in this field right over here actually. Okay. Um, this is just showing the time. It's just so that the spectators can know how much time they have left within each match. Okay. So it's your 15 second autonomous period, which is where your robot runs purely off of code. Okay. Nothing else. It's just how they, the code that you write, and then the driver period starts for a minute 35 after that. Okay. And then over here on... So they're queuing right, up another match right now? Yeah, on the far field. Okay. okay. And then right here you have your qualification rankings, which is saying, based on your performance in matches, where you are compared to everybody else. So this is usually after how, after um, the qualification matches are all over, all of the teams will line up in sequential order, and they do alliance selection, which is the first 12 teams pick. Okay. You can see, let's take a look at the crowd here, folks. The uh, parents, everybody. Uh, there's, but all said and done, there's a few hundred people here. Yeah, um, so right now, uh, now this is a match right here, correct? Yes, this is a match. All right, so talk me they're, through this. Right now, they're scoring. So this match actually just finished. Okay. So right now, they're scoring all of the different pieces that you see on the field and making sure they get the scores right, which they'll then send to that computer over there, and they'll confirm it, and then they'll go on the qualification rankings. So, all right. I don't know what the score is obviously right now, but they're just about to calculate it. There's an active match going on over here right yeah. now? Yeah, and this match over here is currently in progress. So 
So here's an actual robotics match taking place. Yes. Okay. So it looks like they're trying to so, gather blocks. Yeah, the objective of the game is to stack as many cubes as you can within your designated zones. And then for each cube that you put in one of the, some people call them chalices, champagne glasses, whatever you prefer, that increases the point total for that color cube. So for each cube that they put in, that adds one more point to the amount of, to that, for the example, the purple cubes, that adds one more point to each purple cube that's in these corner zones. And then the red team has to score in the red zones, the blue team has to score in the blue zones. So right now, are there four teams competing? There are four total robots, yes, four teams. Okay. Um, you have two on two on each alliance. So every every match, there are two teams, uh, red Working and blue, together. and then comprised of other teams. So there's four teams total competing. So yeah. Okay. So on that side, you have the people fire on the green shirt and others, and the black shirts. And they're one alliance, and then the other alliance is on this side. Well, and you can see. So that's that's our local Firestone High School team right there. Yeah, huh? in the green. What, where's their robot? Which one's theirs? Do we know? Uh, over there in the back corner, seven three one six D. All right. So, um, just by looking, you can see the, the the incredible variety just in these four robots, just in the way that they're they're built. They're built design. And it's mo it's all completely original designs. There is no guidelines for anything. So what um, control wise? Yes. What 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 kind of just to give a Give a general overview. What kind of transmitters are you guys using for, is it all VEX provided Yeah, so stuff? VEX, VEX provides everything for you. Okay. So you have your controller, which connects to the Cortex, and they send messages to each other, basically like the brain to the controller. Okay. So there's a brain of your robot, so your Cortex on the robot that connects to, you plug all your motors into the Cortex, and then that communicates with the controller, and then you drive it similar to an Xbox, how you'd play a game driving a robot. It's actually very simple. It okay. can be difficult, but, the controls themselves usually tend to be simple. All right, let's go take a look at the uh, skills. The skills challenge you said yeah, over skill here? Yeah, skills challenge is over there. <clears throat> Heading on over. So now this is not timed. So this actually is timed. It is timed. Okay. So so we do have practice fields up in the top where it's just anybody can practice whatever they want. But skills field is one of the ways that you can, as I said earlier, to win awards like excellence in design, you have to have a skills board. So you get three chances of, to do your skills, three driver control, and then three autonomous. So right now you just saw Team B is cleaning up 7.6B from Firestone. They are cleaning up the field after they do their first skills run so they can let another team go. So in skills you have a minute and 45 seconds I believe to just score as much as you possibly can. Okay. So your autonomous is pre-programmed something you and your coders work together to do and then driver is just to see what your driver can do with your robot. So you can get high scores, you can get low scores, it truly just depends on the robot. That's one of my daughter's friends, it's <laughs> Anya right there. Yes. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, so now see how they're stacking the blocks like that? Yes. Is this their design this to the try and score, or is that a field? Okay. Yeah, every field for Vex, every time when the when the match is over, the field has a preset. You have to set it in the exact same way. Do they do, do kids just know that? After or is it, it memorized? It's complicated, and but after a while, after you're constantly resetting the field, resetting it, so you can see what your skills runs are going to be like, you kind of just tend to pick it up. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. So they just have this memorized. There's also we have sheets around in case you don't, but most likely the competitors they know they know exactly what they're doing. So the, right here we've got our home team, right? Yes. Yeah, so seven three one six D and seven three one six B, both Firestone. All right. Cool. And, and um, so I'm I'm literally in my shot right now, looking at the whole Firestone robotics program. As well, far as the, the competitors, the, these are there two, more? And then there's way more up there. We have. I'm talking about Firestone. Firestone, yeah. There's more Firestone teams up there. Never mind. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I'm like, do I have everybody right here? We have, <laughs> there's another team right there behind you. Seven three one six X. Seven three one six A is up there. Oh, so there's a ton of them. There's yeah, a ton. I, I don't okay. even. I've lost track. No, no, I've that's left. fine. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. Um, so are we getting ready to? He's. We're gonna see one right here. Yeah, they're gonna run. One. How long I, do they have? What's the I time? I believe it's a minute and forty five seconds. Okay. And it, I'm, it looks like the goal is to uh, try and get blocks into the corners and onto the, what yeah, are, the, what are the, the chalices, chalices. Champagne, okay. champagne, champagne glasses, whatever you prefer. Everyone uses a different name sometimes. All right, so we'll watch, we'll watch one more here before we sign off. I believe they're having some technical difficulties. And you said that the, uh, 
You said the referees, he had mentioned the referees are all alumni? Yeah, ev almost every single person that you see at this competition is an alumni. So the referee over here, that's Mike, he's an alumni. Tabin behind them, the ref shirt, he's also an alumni. Pretty much everybody here is, or is a parent of an alumni, if okay. not a parent of a competitor. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so up now we have team 7 through 160 who just finished their match. So did B have an issue with their I robot? I believe they had an issue with connections. Okay. So they're just waiting and going back. <coughs> Get a different angle over here. Once again, folks, we are at the VEX Robotics Competition. One of our local Firestone High School teams is getting ready to do their... <laughs> their skills challenge. So they just finished their skills run. That was it? That was it. Some teams, depending on where you are in the competition and if you just had a rebuild or not, sometimes your programming may be different than others. So some people will have one that will try and clear the field. Some people just go for simple. It, it really depends on. Where You're you kidding are. me. No. I so there's that. there's there's strategy. Yeah, there, there's a <laughs> there's lot a ton of strategy. Of strategy. That goes into this game. Oh man. Everything. This is great. This is great. That was it. Yep. That was. Well, good. I got it, man. You guys were great. <laughs> I got it. Match 45, final result, red 11, red 9, blue Let me flip 11. it here real quick. Mallory Gray. Oh, hi. All right. All right, folks, we're going to sign off um, for now. Now, I, is there an admission cost to get in here? No, it is entirely free. You can just walk into Firestone and we'll be here. All right, so it's free of charge to get in, and Match you guys go until when today? It's like five or six o'clock. It should be five or six. They're here the rest of the day, five, six o'clock. It's noon. They're going to take a lunch break at noon, and competitions start back up at one. And from what I understand, the afternoon. That's when the quarterfinals, semifinals, and finals happen, and all the awards are now. So it, it can get pretty intense. So yeah, you want to come watch a robotics competition live? Stop on out this afternoon between one and five o'clock right here at Firestone High School. Again, there's schools from all over Ohio competing right now. Thank you so much. Yep, You've been such you. a gracious host. And I know you just got thrust into this. You did great, <laughs> yeah, you did great, you. you did great. Hey, uh, I will be live this afternoon at a uh, swim event at University of Akron. And tomorrow we're back at, we're at Staff Music and we're back live on the air for our normally scheduled programming. Until then, I don't know where I'm going, but there ain't no sense of being late. Join me. Say goodnight, Shirley. <laughs> goodnight, Shirley.